don't know why I have to carry this thing every week. Why don't you well, take it home with you once I've in a while? I've got to fix my tie and everything because this is yeah, going to be a good show, Jack. Yeah. Why don't you tell those people that? Well, what I am. That's Whitey Harris. I'm Jack Buck, and we're very happy that you're going to join us in Top Star Bowling. We're at the Marlboro Lanes, and we've got a reserved seat just for you. You'll be able to see everything perfectly. Come on inside. <laughs> It's time for another week's edition of Top Star Bowling. From the Marlboro Lanes in the village of Marlboro, just southwest of the city of St. Louis, which is the gateway to the west, we're here with another session for you, and we have a fellow back to try to win for the fifth consecutive time, and a very formidable challenger on this particular show. And before introducing the bowlers, and by the way, in the future, we're going to have another ladies' match for you. Before introducing the bowlers, let me tell you a bit about the format on Top Star Bowling. Three games, total pins count to determine the winner for $1,000. The loser collects $500. And so one of our bowlers today is bowling for his fifth $1,000 prize. In addition, he's out in front in the high game and in the high series for a 13-week period. And he could win the King Louis Shirt Award, $1,500 for the high series and $1,000 for the high game. And he's just collecting so much money that it's fabulous. A bit later on, I'll be introducing Whitey Harris, with whom I have the pleasure of working. Right now, the king of the hill, the defending champion on the show, back for his fifth time from the St. Louis area, former Masters champion. He's been averaging 226 a game here on Top Star Bowling, Ray Blue. <laughs> Ray, good to see you. Glad to be back, Jack. His uh, opponents get tougher and tougher. Well, he's thrown a lot of strikes in practice, and I think we'll have a real good match today. Ray is referring to a fellow who in the past has been selected as a member of the All-American team by the Bowler's Journal. One of the great team bowlers. He's won a lot of professional bowlers titles. And he's challenging Ray Bluth today, trying to become king of the hill, Glenn Allison. <laughs> Glenn, good to see you. Thank you, Jack. It's a pleasure being here. It's been a while since I've had the pleasure of being with you. And uh, here on Top Star Bowling, uh, we've let you get warmed up in practice. No chatter, handshake, good luck to each other. Good luck. And away we go. Ray Bluth, Glenn Allison. Three games, total pins, $1,000 on Top Star Bowling. <laughs> Glenn Allison won the toss. The toss of the coin is the only thing that Ray Bluth has not been winning in these weeks of Top Star Bowling. And Glenn elected to have Ray lead off on 21. And there he is. And right in the pocket he goes, picking up where he left off last week when he finished his third game with seven straight strikes. Ray has the high series in this 13-week period with a 7.05, and he also has the uh, high single. And the high average of 226, Jack, for the 12 games so far. He's got everything going. Glenn Allison leaves the 10-pin, so he couldn't match Ray Bluth in the first frame. The voice you just heard was that of Jerome Whitey Harris, a member of the Brunswick Advisory Staff of Champions, former outstanding bowler in his own right, well-known nationally and internationally on the bowling scene. Glenn Allison going for the spare, the 10 pin, and he gets it, so each started with a mark. Glenn Allison is uh, from St. Louis, hails originally from California, Whittier, California. A little fellow, as you can observe, 5'7", 150 pounds. Married, two children. He's a great bowling instructor, by the way. He has a style unique to him. There's his strike on 21. Why do you use those little chop-chop steps going up there? Yes, this has been a distinctive style of Glenn, and also the next time he's up there, Jack, we'll watch how he holds the ball at his knees to the right to keep it in line, almost comparable to this fellow that's on the approach now who holds it at a higher level, shoulder high. 
Ray had a strike in the first frame. And he leaves a 10 pin. He walked across in front of me, Whitey. Did a pretty good hit? It was a fair hit, Jack, but I think it, uh, it was a 10 pin. Watch Ray here. Like we try to impart a little instruction to people, he'll stand to the left on the approach and go directly at that 10 pin. Walk. The bowling for $1,000 and the privilege to return on Top Star Bowling. There's a spare for Bluth after getting a strike in the first frame. The winner of this match will take on Buzz Fazio, one of the colorful characters through the years, through the decades, I might say. You might this say, but I'm not <laughs> going to. Very quiet as the fans co cooperate. And there's Ray Bluth's strike. Strike, spare, strike. Now, Glenn Allison, a chance to get a lead here with the first double of the game. I think, Jack, we're going to see quite a match. Uh, I think uh, Glenn has the ability to stay with Ray. It's just a matter of who's going to get the, if it's a bad break, you want to call it, to get the advantage. And he surely must have the proper mental approach because he knows he's going to have to hit them in order to beat Ray. There's his double. You won't see much expression uh, from Glenn Allison. He's quite a passive performer. And there's that gal again now. Whitey, she's here again. I know what you're leading up to. I know to. her name now. You do? Well, I'm not going to ask her. I know her name. You do? Her first name. <laughs> Allison went three in a row. The young lady we were talking about is here almost every show. I'm, I'm getting so that I look for her now. Her name is Isbel. Isbel. I know I couldn't find anything out about it. Of course, I have to be careful. I'm from St. Louis, Jack. Oh, oh, oh. Ray Bluth going for a double in the fourth frame. And that ball really went driving in there. We've got a couple of hot performers. I started to say before that Glenn Allen's Glenn Allison certainly must have the proper mental approach to this particular match because he knows he's going to have to get some strikes in order to beat Bluth, who's averaged 226 plus for the 12 games. He defeated Steve Nagy, Wayne Zahn, Harry Smith, and Bill Schrock. This is the fifth frame now, and Ray Bluth a bit high and leaves the seven pin. The four seven was there for a while. Jack, the, re drop. the reason I was leaning over was not to get affectionate with you, but Glenn Allison has a reputation that when rolling in matches like this, he normally doesn't watch his opponent at all and uh, used to have a habit of where he'd watch to the left or the right. And I was just uh, noting now he's been staring out ahead. I recall that about Glenn. Oftentimes he's turning to the left and staring up at the ceiling as his opponent throws the ball. So Ray got off the strikes after getting a double. We've had no opens in the game. And Ray Bluth has 89 through the fourth frame with a spare up. Clint Allison has a three-bagger going for him after starting with a spare. He really gets that ball out, up, down on one knee, and he hits. And that's four in a row for him. It's one of the few times that Ray Bluth has trailed in our matches. And so Ray Bluth has 89 through the fourth frame with a spare up. Glenn Allison, 20 in the first frame with a four-bagger going. Sixth frame. We move right along when they get strikes, don't we? Glenn is out and up and a bit high, and he leaves the 4-7. So he stops his string right there. Jack, in a match like this, if you leave two pins on a spare, you're in bad shape. Because these fellas have been shooting just at single pins and all strikes. Point out here that the series Top Star Bowling is sanctioned by the American Bowling Congress. The lanes here at Marlboro are certified by ABC. And these lanes, 21 and 22 in this particular house, have, have not been honed in any way to help the scores, despite what Ray Bluth has been showing us. These are the sort of conditions that you'd encounter when you walk into your fine Brunswick bowling establishment. And that's a good idea, by the way. Ray high again, seven. 
at the 710 momentarily. Ray Bluth in winning his four previous matches, bowled 626, then 692, which is currently the high series, 675, 705, the 705 is currently the high series. I meant to say, and he could win another $1,500 in addition to the $4,000 in prize money he has already won, plus the 500 or 1,000 that he wins here. Thinking, observing, and of course, Ray's on the approach now, but Glenn, I think now, just stares down the opposite lane to whatever Ray's on. Seventh frame, Ray Bruth has to stare up. Nothing touched the four pin. So Ray has had three strikes in this game, put two of them together. Glenn Allison has had four strikes, and he put them all together. Glenn's ahead about 21 pins right now. Ray Bruth with a spare. Well, you can see how important these spares are. Here to blow one of those. You, you lose wow. a spare, Jack. It's actually 11 pin. So often, a lot of your average bowlers, uh, they get a strike, or they don't, and then they just lose faith and hope. It's that they should concentrate more on spares. And here's a good example here how these pros shoot. Somebody misses a spare here, they'll likely miss, lose this particular game. On the nose. He saw it coming, too. Remember the last time he was over there? He was down on one knee to help get that strike, and he got it. This time he was trying to bring the ball further over as it started to run on him. And this will be the first open, unless Glenn gets lucky. So a split stops him in the seventh frame, makes it about an even match. Glenn will still have the lead, however. That's just some eight pins. While we're on Glenn here, we remarked before, you'll note that he brings the ball down on the right. That's to keep the ball in line, just like we're seeing now. And he's back on a strike. We see a few of the uh, good professional bowlers who wrap that ball around behind them on the back swing, but most of them, and these two are included in this group, have that straight back swing. Why handicap themselves? In fact, Ray's, uh, if we observe it this time, Jack, his is a real short back swing. Right over the third arrow. He carry him. People think he got a lucky break, Whitey, but actually he was right in the same spot where he's always been. The ball a little different angle going in. Oh, I'm sure Ray didn't figure that was a lucky strike. He, every time he throws the ball, he expects to get a strike. He had that ball working, and he got proper mixing back there. So each has a strike in the eighth frame. Here we are in the ninth. Each will be trying to double. Glenn Allison has an eight-pin lead. There's another one, but almost like it. The seven-pin wobbles, but does not go down. As the Brunswick A2 automatic pin setter grabs it. And if the machine were to knock it down, it would have to be respotted, as you probably know. So Glenn Allison with the lead can get further out in front when he comes up in the ninth if he can double. Ray Bluth with a spare in the ninth frame. Now Glenn Allison, he has a strike working and he also has the only open. Ray Bluth could go on to 217 and Glenn Allison could go on to 245. Looking for a double. He dived in and gets his second split on lane 22. Jack, we can sit back here and occasionally watch, and it just, he got the 4-6 on that lane, and I watched then where his ball went over, and this time his ball hit the same spot. Uh, Glenn has a spot bowler, so I guess he was just gambling, thought maybe he had done something wrong on that other pitch. Hey. He had a pretty good whirl at it. Glenn Allison has opened in the seventh and in the ninth and goes into the roll off now. And whereas he could have had a 245 game. He 
now will be behind in the particular match. One strike. He needs two more for 213. Two more for 213, and Ray Bluth could strike out for 217. So the splits brought him back after the four bagger had put him out in front. Jack Glenn is standing completely in the area on the approach where a lot of people stand when they shoot at a 10 pin. He's out. And in. Now that's his seventh strike in this game. He's going to be just over the 200 mark. And I think Jack his first uh, in the first frame he left a pretty good hit when he left the 10 pin. That's right. He could well have started with five in a row. But the split stopped him. The Four six and the six seven ten. Two ten. Two ten for Glenn Ellis. So Ray Blue suddenly finds an opportunity to go out in front for the first time. He could go on to two seventeen with three hits. Bear up and a strike in. You think he's got in his mind, Jack, that he's trying to maintain this seven strikes a game and is that what, what he's been doing for the most part? Yes, and now he'll need the next two. And knowing what a kind of a fellow this guy is on figures, I don't think he's thinking of that, but because he's out there for every ten pins he can knock down. Here's the one that would put him ahead in the game. Nope. He leaves the four six. Somebody in the audience said I knew he was going to do that. Well, he's going to be behind. He'll bring one of these back for two of six, and it'll be four pins behind. And Glenn Allison and I have a good crack at dethroning our defending champion on top star bowling. Ray Bluth has won for four consecutive weeks. And our first game is about over. Ray Bluth has bowled two oh six. Ray had five strikes. Glenn Allison had seven. The end of the first game. Glenn Allison 210. Ray Bluth 206. During our last four weeks in Top Star Bowling, when Ray Bluth has been winning, a trend has been set along about this time at the conclusion of the first game, but not now. Glenn Allison has out hit Ray seven strikes to five and has a four pin lead. Anything can happen as we continue, and the second game is coming your way on Top Star Bowling. Ray Bluth was our leadoff man in the first game. Now it's Glenn Allison up on 21. Glenn leading by four pins, 210 to 206. And the four pin remains. Lift a 10 pin in the first frame of the first game. It's been in the pocket all the way. In fact, neither bowler has missed the pocket. Allison with two splits in the first game, but nonetheless holds the lead as a result of four strikes he put together. Ray Bluth had only one double out of his five strikes. There's a spare for Allison. You know, one way for mom and dad to score with the youngsters and be able to spend more time with. Their children is take them out for a couple of lines of bowling. The enjoyment provided will be appreciated by everybody. They're getting the youngsters started in a sport that they'll enjoy for years to come. Take your family bowling this weekend. Did you see a 4 9 drop there? Yes, Jack. It was peculiar the way the 4 9. Normally, 4 9 it stands, but the drop to the right. Ray had a string on him. Ray started the first game with a strike. He's had only one double so far. Leaves a seven pin. Jack, I guess sometimes uh, uh, realizing that these fellas do try to outfigure each other, and of course when the toss was won by Allison, he 
let uh, we say let, but he selected Ray or Ray to choose first. Now you'll notice that in the second game, Allison was up there first. These fellows figured it out because they want to end up on the roll off on the good lane that they figure they can hit. This is actually the way championship matches are rolled, and this has been the precedent set some years ago. It's as even for one as it's the other. It's only yeah, I'm that surprised team. that the fellow who wins the toss gets to choose whether he goes first or second and also chooses the lane. Well, that. Glenn it. Hey, it fell for. He shakes his head. He had two splits in that first game. Now, after starting with a spare in the first frame, he almost got one here. After the 6-10. That ball seems to be heavy for him, Whitey, the way he's way out there with it. Well, I think Glenn, because he uses what they, like, cups the ball, Jack, and we keep constantly referring to the people to watch how these fellows bowl, and somehow or another, we always come to the follow-through. Here again, you see where a follow-through by Glenn Allison. He really pulls up. He's in that. The two spares and then a strike. Ray Bluth started with a strike and then a spare. Ray trying for his fifth win. We've had some great names on Top Star Bowling. Bill Lillard, Bob Chase, Don Ellis, Joe Joseph, Steve Nagy, Ray Orff, Wayne Zahn, Harry Smith, Bill Schrock, a couple of the ladies, Marion Latterwick and Judy Audsley. Threw that one out the window. We should get it. We should get a print of that one because uh, how often does this fella go by the head pin like that? He left the one two four Jack. This a is wild pitch or a pass ball? <laughs> it's a wild pitch. That's definitely. It's a. It's both, isn't it? Yes, you've got me again with I can't come back with an answer. He covers the one two four. So Glenn Allison is of one pin ahead. He's increased his advantage to five pins in the match, and he also has a strike working. We're looking at uh, Mrs. Allison. Yes, uh, that's Sherry, and the typical of a lot of the pros' wives, Jack. They they live and die with these matches, and uh, she is uh, fairly a, a good bowler herself. She's a pretty good average. Before the match, when Glenn was uh, warming up, I heard his wife say, he's doing better now, he's got a little more speed on the ball. Uh, they know what they're talking about, of course they... Well, I think this is true. Behind every man, there's a woman with a big mouth. <laughs> you said that, I didn't. Glenn Allison looking for a double on 22. Those pins were off uh, in the blink of an eye back there. Talk about wiping them out. That's a double for Glenn. Is he about to dethrone Ray Bluth? Jack, like we noted before, look where he's standing. He's all the way to the left on it. I don't think he can go any further to the left on the approach. He barely got there, leaves the two, four, five. Boy, he wanted that one. He threw a short jab as he walked back toward the ball return. <laughs> he wanted that hit. Down goes the 2 4 5. Right at this point, uh, even though Ray Bluth is trailing his 7 0 5 high series and his 268 single game still stand. And that could be worth another $2,500 from King Louis shirts. He's concentrating, Jack. Look at those eyes looking out over that wrist. Right at that spot, what he's aiming at. Looks like he's just seen an accident when he's <laughs> staring out there. <laughs> There's his strike. Boy, he really bears down. Looks like he's in a trance up there, Wayne. He's all concentration. I think you well, could shoot a cannon off in here and it wouldn't bother Ray. You, Ray Bluth has 57 through the third with a double up, and Glenn Allison has 85 through the fourth with a spare up. Ray 
playing blue. So with a little getaway, leaves a four pin in the sixth frame. Ray was looking for a three bagger. Each has had the opportunity to get three in a row here. Neither was able to do it. Ray continues to mark. He has had no opens. Glenn Allison had two splits in the first game, but nonetheless is out in front. Led at the end of the first game by four pins. He's now three pins ahead. Trying to get him a strike in the sixth frame. Well, I never thought he'd make it with that one. I never thought he'd get up there. So he has 105 through the fifth. Ray Bluth could have 106 and a one point lead. But Glenn Allison has this strike going. A chance to cash in and increase his three pin advantage. Boy, this is going to go right down. For the final roll off, it appears. There he is. So Ray Bluth, 106 through the fifth with a spare up, and Glenn Allison, 105 through the fifth, and he has a double going for himself. Ray Bluth has had three strikes in this game so far. He has a spare up as he bowls in the seventh frame. Glenn Allison has a double working. Glenn Allison in the lead at this point in the match. And Ray Bluth rocks a seven pin and couldn't have come any closer. It couldn't have tilted any more without dropping. This is a good point, Jack, on the A2 when the automatic uh, picks up that pin. Of course, if it would have hit it and the pin dropped, ABC rules demands that the pin is reset and that pin is still rocking. So Ray goes for the spare, gets a spare. He has 125 for the six with the spare up. The only opens in this match thus far belong to Glenn Allison with two splits in the first game. It's unusual, according to what we have seen in the past weeks, to see Ray go this long without a string. He's on 21. And he carries. That's about three, Whitey, that he has carried that have been on the nose a bit. I don't know if Ray was muttering to himself, uh, I sure am lucky or not, but. Uh, that was a lucky hit, there's no doubt about it. I think he would admit it too, but right now in the middle of the match, he's taking it. Mm hmm. He needs it too, because Glenn Allison has a double going. Glenn looking for three. He's there. The winner of this match will take on Buzz Fazio. Glenn Allison started this game with a four pin advantage. He's piling him up now. Glenn could go on to 255. Ray Bluth could go on to 235. This is the ninth frame. And no 10 pin. Glenn put four together in the first game. He's had a double and a three bagger in this game. Leaves a 10 pin in the ninth. So Ray will have a chance. Ray Bluth will have a chance to get some of those pins back. If he can hit in the ninth frame. There's the spare. 184 through the eighth with a spare up for Glenn Allison and now Ray Bluth will bowl his ninth and tenth frames. He has 145 through the seventh, has a strike in the eighth, bowling in the ninth. It's pretty far outside. It's pretty far outside and didn't bring it up. Two, four, five, eight. His pin count is important too, except for the fact he's working on a strike. Every pin important. So 
So neither was able to strike in the ninth. And now Ray wants to cover this. And he does. And we go into the roll-off. Glenn Allison has increased his lead. He's ahead by 20-some pins now. Jack, which is unusual, in this game here, Ray actually missed the pocket three times. So it's just one of those things that happens to these fellas. They get off, and it's a little rough to get back to your stride. There's one for Ray. Giving him 185. Through the ninth. 215 if he hits two more. He's had five strikes. He had five in the first game. Ten pins to him, and now he'll end with 215 if he hits again. Glenn Allison could go on to 234. He could pick up 19 pins, and he led by four at the start of this game. Ray leaves three and ends with 212. Ray Bluth, 206, 212, 418. Glenn Allison, 210, 234, if he can crank three of them in there. In his position on approach, Jack, actually Glenn is on the same area that he does on the left lane, so he's playing way deep. Threw right at it. And left the four pin. So he's not going to zoom out of sight. We still have a very close match on our hands. He gives him 203 through the ninth frame. He brings us back and hits. It'll be 223. And he'll pick up 11 more pins and we'll have a 15 pin lead. There's his spare. No opens in this game for either bowler. Jack Glenn, where a lot of the top rollers will look out at range finders, his angle is right directly at the foul line. He aims for a spot. Finishes with 223. <laughs> so that's the end of the second game. Ray Bluth, 206, 212, 418. Glenn Allison, 210, 223, 431. And a lead of 23 pins at this point. Heading into the third and final game on Top Star Bowling. Ray Bluth and Glenn Allison will be tangling in the third and final game on Top Star Bowling in just a moment. During the weeks we've talked about bowling for senior citizens, and these folks don't mind my referring to them as such. And Mr. and Mrs. Elbring are here to chat with us. Ma'am, how are you? Enjoying the match here? I am. I certainly am. Who's going to win it? Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I wouldn't even ask you. I wouldn't I wouldn't ask you a question like that and put you on the spot. Oh, well, how are you doing? Oh, pretty well. How old are you, may I ask? 67. 67. How old is your wife? 71. <laughs> is he right? That's right. You don't mind us talking about it? I him. don't mind. You're I, a bowler, right? I've just lived longer than he has. <laughs> That's right, when you stop to think about it. Huh? You're a bowler. Oh, I don't think you'd call me a bowler exactly. You bowl, though, huh? I bowl. I try. <laughs> you in a league? I'm in a mixed league, yes. Uh -huh. What's your average? Oh, about 123 to 125. How long have you been bowling? Four years. <laughs> About the same amount of time for you, huh? Same thing. We started together. Are you in a... How long have you been married, by the way? 38 years. That's wonderful. How many leagues are you in? Two. And your average? Oh, around 162 to 170. And your high game? 287. No 300 yet, huh? No 300. What's the matter with you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Missed two pins one day when I got 287. I'll be darned. It is a great sport, isn't it, no matter oh, what the fine. age? Very good. Not only that, when he's bowling, you know where he is all the time, right? <laughs> well, you can't always tell, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, a pleasure to visit with you. I think we've made a point to our audience, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you.
Thank you very much. It's 4.33, 4.18. Glenn Allison out in front. And our final game on Top Star Bowling. Third game now. Ray Bluth has 418. Glenn Allison 433. Ray starts us off on 21, and that's the way you expected him to start. Trailing my 15 pins. And just like that, he throws just a little bit of pressure in the direction of Glenn Allison. Allison up now in his first frame. And he's there. Whitey, we weren't uh, quite together at the conclusion of the second game, but 433 to 418 is correct, right? Yes, that's right, Jack. We had a little error again. I think it's these pencils I'm using. <laughs> I tell you what, sometimes these matches are so interesting you neglect the score. Glenn Allison going for the double, trying to put the pressure on Ray, and he does. Did you say little 810 sitting there for a while? It walked off. You had that one correct, that's for sure. And now Ray Blue. He needs the double. He's already 15 pins down. And he's been without a string in this match. That's unusual. That's not unusual, that double. So we've got a dandy going. Glenn Allison from St. Louis, Red Luth from St. Louis. He refers to his home as being in Orson Woods, which is a suburb of St. Louis. Before we get away from our two uh, guests that were there, you know, this is a tremendous program throughout the country, the senior citizens, where they can go into their bowling lanes and actually be organized. You just wonder what other activity, uh, sports-wise, they could do if it weren't for bowling. There's three for Ray Blue. Uh, along those lines, Jack, the American Bowling Congress has uh, a class now, which is a senior division, so they've got behind it. And actually, someone associated with Brunswick is a Charlie Johns, and Charlie Johns is the originator of this seniors division. Remarkable man, Charlie's in his 70s. I think we had him on Top Star Bowling last year, didn't we, up in Chicago? That's correct. Okay, now let's get back here and see if Allison can get three. Yeah. Ray Blue started with 206, 212, and now he has three in a row in the third game. Glenn Allison, 210, 223. He started with three in a row, and he's maintained a 15 pin advantage. But with this string of strikes going for both, as soon as Glenn stops, Blues will catch him, and if Blues stops, Allison will likely double his lead. Maybe inside. Oh, here's that. I thought he put that ball down a bit further inside than he had I been. I thought he did too, Jack, uh, but you remarked something. I think the people would enjoy uh, listening to us talk than watch two guys throw all these strikes. Yeah. Ray Bluth needed him right here to stay with him. Allison has four. Bluth has three. Bluth has four. They're hitting him. We've got a good one going here. About what we expected. Of course, sometimes you're disappointed because that's what bowling is all about. That's what all sports are all about, but not on this session. Ray Bluth up on 21 in the fifth frame. Both have to hang right in there. No mistakes allowed. There's another one for Ray Bluth, and that's five for him. It'd be embarrassing, wouldn't it? And we don't want to put any jinx on anybody. A couple of could happen, yeah, and a fellow would lose a match by 15 pins. Mm -hmm. That would be Mr. Raymond Bluth. I think we could stand it, and I know the viewing audience could. And Allison in the fifth frame, looking for his fifth strike. Yeah, and they each have five. And so in the third game, five straight for Ray Bluth and five for Glenn Allison.
Jack and looking over there too. I imagine now there'll be a little bit more time on the approach. A little bit more study of the spot they're hitting as the tension does mount. Sixth frame for Glenn Allison and another strike. Are we watching two good ones? Well, we certainly are. Now Ray Bluth has to come right back. Ray trailed by 15 pins. Thought he had something going, putting a string together, but Allison right with him. Glenn already has six. Bluth has five. Bluth is out. He's up. He's a bit high and he splits. The four, seven, nine, ten stops Ray Bluth. Boy, what a letdown, huh? You could hear it, Jack, amongst the people here. There's some size, and I don't think it necessarily means they're favoring one bowl or another. It was just the idea of seeing so many strikes. Ray takes down two pins. He started with five in a row, and then that's his first open of the match. I'll try to get on the string again and hope that Glenn Allison will come to a halt. Glenn, by the way, is shooting at the uh, high single, too, of 268, which Ray Bluth has. Ray's back on the strikes. That's what you've got to do. Glenn also has a good crack at the 705 high series. So he could be winning himself a uh, Total of $3,500 here on Top Star Bowling. Right with this game, but he's got to keep going. Seventh frame. And a four pin. A four pin stops him. He had six in a row. He can still mark, however, and take advantage of the open by Ray Bluth in the sixth frame. He's 30 pins ahead right now. 15 at the end of the second game, and he's gained 15 more here. And a spare. But now Ray Bluth can get some of those pins back when he comes up in the eighth frame if he can double. We're in the eighth frame. He has a spare working. Trying to knock off Ray Bluth, who has won for four consecutive weeks. Allison would like to get back on a strike and have something to work on. And there is a strike. Strike in the eighth for Allison. Now Bluth really needs his double. This is one he really needs, Whitey. He probably wouldn't have much chance if he doesn't get it. That's correct, Jack, because uh, Ray, well, let's look at it this way. He needs them all for a 262 game. He has a strike working. He's in the eighth frame, and he leaves a 4-7. frame for Ray Bluth. Well, that split really hurt him. Yeah, split back in the sixth frame. That's what uh, I think, uh, Jack, it's no use saying uh, Glenn isn't going to win this one because the margin there is true. Ray could come up with 242. And just trying to look ahead, why all Glenn would have to do would be to spare out with his margin of 15 pins. Ray comes up with a split in the ninth, and that does it there. One of the big items of interest now is the shot that Glenn Allison has at the 705. He could bowl 712. Luth was trying for it because he really needed it. He didn't get it. And it looks as if Glenn Allison will be the opponent for Buzz Fazio next week. And Allison in the ninth frame now, he has a strike up. If he's going to get that 700 series, he needs a strike. He has to strike out. And the four pin stops him, and so Ray Bluth still has the high single and the high series going for him in this 13 week period.
259 if Glenn goes all the way now in the roll -off. He really put his shoulder to the wheel when Booth started to string those strikes together. Stayed right with him, and we had a very, very exciting match here, and the folks at Marlboro Lanes have really enjoyed the action. He needs two more now for 259. <laughs> Some poor guy in the audience had to cough about the time Glenn Allison was gone. He almost died trying to hold that cough back so not to bother Glenn. <laughs> He's going to end with 250 something. I think the fellow that coughed has been identified as Ray Blue's banker. He don't get much today. <laughs> oh, he's still got that high single, high series going for him. $500, 4000 he won the past four weeks. I'd like to be his banker and have an airplane ticket. There's 259. Nice going, Glenn Allison. Ray Blue congratulated him. Glenn said, thank you, Ray. He had 10 strikes in that game. He left a four pin in the seventh and he left a four pin in the ninth. Both 692. Ray Bluth in the roll off. Leaves a six pin. Ray with a split in the sixth and a split in the ninth. A couple of four pins stopped to Glenn Allison, that's all. Sparing a strike for 207 for uh, Ray if he can hit now. Two oh seven six twenty five with a hit. It's been a good one, hasn't it? And a seven count. And Jake, this one is over, and Glenn Allison is the new king of the hill as Ray Bluth bowled 204 for 622. And Glenn Allison 259 and 692 here on Top Star Bowling. Well, it's all over for this week, except for the awarding of the prize money. And for that chore, we have a very attractive lady who is a graduate of the John Robert Powers School of Modeling in the Pat Allen Agency here in St. Louis, Barbara Kane. Here comes the money gal for this week. Barbara? Uh, how do you do? And I have a, a check for Ray here. It's a fine game. A loser share of $500. Thank you. And? And for Glenn Allison, a fine series of $692. The winner's check, $1,000. Thank you. Did you get him in all right? Right. You sign that? You, you sign that check? No, I don't. You don't sign. <laughs> Barbara, thank you very much. Thank you. Barbara came. <laughs> Ray, everything uh, good has to come to an end. Are you on the four weeks? You still have the high game and the high series going? Well, I'm very happy, Jack, with what I uh, had bowled in the past and uh, wish Glenn a lot of luck. You're wonderful to watch out here, Ray. Thank you, Jack. Bye. Thank you very much. <laughs> Glenn, uh, Buzz Fazzi will be along next week to see if he can do something about standing on this side and taking down that big check. You were after that at high single and high series, too, weren't you? I Admit sure, it. I sure was. Uh, I had a <laughs> shot at it there. Uh, after uh, Ray split, I had a chance. I had the match one, and uh, then if I could strike on uh, 22 alley and then back again on 21, the last two shots, I could have uh, beat both the high game and the high I series. I didn't know you were that greedy. Uh, well, I'm pretty greedy. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn, congratulations. See you next week. Huh? Thank you. We'll be here next week at the Marlboro Lanes for more top star bowling. Buzz Fazio, a very colorful character, will be the opponent for Glenn Allison. And now we speak for Whitey Harris, who we say from top star bowling in the Marlboro Lanes, thanks for your time this time. Till next time, so long. <laughs> top star bowling has been presented by... Brunswick, the number one name in bowling. Top Star Bowling 
is sanctioned by the American Bowling Congress.